everyone, my name is Maddie. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my way too big March wrap up. So I had the most incredible reading month in March. Don't know what happened. Yes, there were a lot of short books, but nonetheless, I don't know what happened. And I'm absolutely thrilled about how much I got through. Honestly, I just, I can't even believe it, but it was amazing. So I'm very quickly gonna go through the stats of how I read, but then we're gonna try and do some really speedy reviews. Most of these books, if not all of them, are covered in vlogs whilst I was reading them. So you can get more in-depth thoughts there if you want to, or at least different thoughts. I am also working on getting my Goodreads up to date with reviews for as many books as possible, but this is going to take a while. So apologies, there's not reviews over there yet, but there hopefully will be soon, even if they're very brief. Because yeah, I read a lot of books. And so if I give you long reviews of all of them here, this is going to be an exceptionally long video. So we're gonna try and keep it short and sweet, which we all know I am absolutely awful at doing. I'm a chatterbox but we're gonna give it a go. I also have 30 minutes left on a sprint whilst I'm filming this, so that's my deadline. See if I can film all 20 or almost 20 books in 30 minutes. And that leads us very nicely onto the first statistic I always track, which is how many books did I read this month? The answer to that question is 19. 19, it's ridiculous, but it's great. And it does bring my goal for the year up to 38 out of 52. I think I'm definitely gonna to get to that 52 mark and probably pretty soon, which I'm thrilled about. And the total number of pages across these 19 books, this is where the evidence of short books comes in, is 4,483, which works out as 145 pages a day, which is huge, and an average book length of 235. I said there were a lot of small books. There was actually a whole video of me reading eight of these books, which was all novellas. You can watch it there. And that will give you very in-depth thoughts about all of the novellas I read, which I will be rushing through in a minute. It is like an hour and a half long, I do apologize. I got a bit carried away in that vlog. But that's kind of the overall stats. Then as always, we're gonna get some more specifics. So in terms of intended audience, way off my normal this month, I read 18 books aimed at adults and one aimed at YA. So definitely a big swing towards adult this month. A lot of them are ones I would say have significant crossover appeals, so like such as the Wayward Children's books and lots of others, but they are technically adult, so I'm going to call them that. And then for genre, I had a lot more variety than normal this month, so I read seven fantasy books, five sci-fi, four contemporary, and three other, so there's like historical or non-fiction. I'm not even going to pretend I'm not reading soft sheets of paper, I normally try to, but there's too many numbers to remember this month. And then star rating, this is where it's a little bit disappointing. Um, I had one five star book, only one book made it to that five star mark. I did have 12 four star books, which is really good, obviously, but I did then also have three three star books and two two star books, which is a bit disappointing. So probably a lower average rating throughout the month than normal for me, but not too bad. So with quick overview stats out of the way, there will be a whole quarterly stats video coming very soon. So don't worry if you want more stats, but with that out of the way, let's get straight into the first book I read, which is The Space Between Worlds by Makaya Johnson. This was the February pick for Phase and Gaze. Of course, as always, I say I'm gonna read it that month and read it just before the live show, which is normally the next month, hence why I read it in March. This is an adult sci-fi story following a girl who lives in a world where parallel universes have been discovered and she is actually dead in almost all of these parallel universes, but that makes her extremely valuable because you can only travel to a parallel universe if you do not exist in it. So her being dead in almost all of them means she can travel to almost all of them and therefore is a really valuable person. This was such an interesting read. I ended up giving it a four star. I didn't love it as much as I thought I would from the first like 50 pages. The concept was fantastic especially the like commentary that goes along with the reason she is dead in all of these worlds is because of her race, because of her upbringing, because of her like socioeconomic status, which means she's less likely to be alive. And the fact that that's replicated in every world and that in so few, so it's out of like 360, she's still alive in eight. The fact that in so few, she's managed to survive past age 20 is just really like impactful. And I loved that reasoning for it that the author put in, just genuinely thought it was amazing. My complaints with this book were the writing was okay, it needed to be longer. I love a short fantasy, this was like 320 pages, but oh my god this needed to be longer. There were so many things that either weren't explained or were explained pretty poorly, which was really disappointing because it started off so strong, but it was still an interesting read and I would still recommend it. If you would like to see further thoughts of this one, we do have a live show where we discussed it for like an hour, so you can check that out if you want to. I'm really gonna try and like churn through these to get through them all at a reasonable length. So the next book we have is First Become Ashes by K.M. Sparer. 
which is messing with the exposure of my camera massively. This is an adult fantasy kind of speculative story following a group of people who are involved with a cult and they are told that if they torture themselves their whole lives they should like get magical powers and should achieve all these amazing things. And they are brought up with this fear of the rest of the world and the outside world to their cult and basically something happens that challenges this view and you're following three different characters who are at very different points of accepting this view. So one who is very much like the cult was just damaging, none of it was real, one who's unsure and then one who strongly believes everything the cult said was true. Really interesting story, there's like adventure, loads of LGBT rep in this. I forgot to mention there's LGBT rep in Space Between Worlds as well, it was a bi main character, but loads of LGBT rep in this. There was male male rep, there's poly rep, um, there's non-binary rep as well, great. I really enjoyed this one. I have said this a million one times, I do have a whole vlog reading this if you want to see more thoughts on it. And I've said this in that and I will say it a million times more. This is a dark as hell book, like just reading the true warnings from the front. It says, First Become Ashes contains explicit sadomasochism and sexual content as well as abuse and consent violations, including rape. I would also put self-harm into that list. Just please go carefully. Really, really dark. I thought it was really impactful. I gave it a four star or a 4.5. I'm still undecided. I've been struggling to rate books this month for some reason. And really enjoyed it, as in like found it interesting and thought provoking but it is dark. Please go carefully. I've said it many times, I'll say it again. But I loved the characters in this. The story was really interesting. I loved how it screwed with my mind. So I spent the whole book not sure what to believe or who to believe. I always love things like that. They absolutely just, anything that gets my brain going and I'm here for it. Next up is the first of the novellas I read for my tour novella vlog. I will say again, I do have a whole feature length movie of a video talking about these books. So if you want more thoughts, I would highly recommend checking out that video, especially for A Sound of the Wild Built, which I will talk about in just a moment. But first up, we have Across Green Grass Fields by Shauna Maguire. This is the sixth book in the Wayward Children series. One of my favourite series ever. I absolutely adore it. I just think it's a brilliant, brilliant portal fantasy series. This is book number six. So I've been with this series for a while now. And I gave this one a 4.5. I really liked it. This follows Reagan, who is an intersex child and has grown up in school. And like all the politics of school, really worried about being excluded, all of this, and then finds a portal fantasy finds a world and she finds a world full of horses and centaurs and unicorns and kelpies and it's great. Really interesting, quite dark this one, which I really enjoyed. I loved the found family vibes of this and the self-acceptance. I thought it was just beautiful. This was definitely one of the strong ones in the series for me. I really enjoyed it. I would highly recommend it. Characters were great. Writing was as always great. I just can't, I just love this series so much and I love every single installment. Next up, one of my more disappointing books of the month is The Factory Witches of Lowell by C.S. Malarick. I ended up giving this a three star. I, on reassessment, think it possibly could be actually a 2.5, but we're gonna stick with a three for now because it's not a bad book. It's just not an interesting book. I honestly, at no point in this book, really cared. I really didn't care about the characters and considering there was a female-female relationship in this, you'd think I would have cared more, but no, I just truly didn't. This is a very similar premise to The Once Future, which is by Alex E. Harrow, which I would highly recommend, especially in preference to this, though it's a lot longer. This follows a group of women who work in workhouses and as like weavers, I don't know what the word is, but work in workhouses in like a past century, don't know exactly which century, like 1700s, 1800s, somewhere there. And basically they go on strike to get better pay and better working conditions. And they are using witchcraft as part of this. And so it's like, witchiness and suffragette. It's, it's good, it was interesting. Just honestly, it was quite boring. I don't know why, it was such an interesting concept and it just did nothing for me. I will admit it had a really hard book to live up to because The Once and Future Witches is a very similar concept and one of my favourite books of all time. But yeah, this didn't do a lot for me. Wouldn't really recommend it that much. The next book I read, I did read it in eARC, so I'll put the cover up here, and that is A Psalm of the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. I'm gonna try and be brief here, but it's gonna be hard. This was a five star read. This is so far my favorite book of the year and I will be honestly quite surprised if anything overtakes it. It would take a truly phenomenal book for that to happen. This is beautiful. To give a quick synopsis, this follows a world where robots have been created. They're completely artificially intelligent, but completely intelligent and sort of independent. And it gets to a point where they are done with living within human norms. And so they choose to leave the human world and go out into the wilderness and live separately to kind of form their own community, form their own society fascinating concept just to start with 
and we're following a man character called Dex and they are a traveling sort of tea seller but don't really know what they're doing with their life really struggling to find purpose and they come across one of these robots and just the plot is interesting the plot is great the existentialism the thought-provoking content the quotes in this book stunning the characters were also phenomenal the robot and Dex just oh so good just truly beautiful I haven't got over it and I read it weeks ago. I want to reread it so badly. The quotes still have me reeling and thinking about all of these important things. Just, I couldn't recommend it highly enough. It's not out yet, unfortunately. It is coming out in July, but please, please, please get it. It's so good and you will not regret it. Then after that, I did read the first book in the Murderbot Diaries, which is All Systems Read by Martha Wells. I gave this four stars. This is a sci-fi story following a kind of android-ish human called a murder bot and these robots I guess actually have been created to kill and they are hired out to people as basically bodyguards but this one's kind of tinkered with their own programming to make them slightly less obedient but it's just so good it's so interesting again it has lots of societal commentary about like trusting people and all sorts of things really interesting ended on a massive cliffhanger and this is the start of a series of novellas so I'm very very intrigued to continue reading this and I think also the LGBT rep gets more prominent as the series goes on which makes me really excited to continue I just loved it so fast paced so interesting so much detail was crammed into a really short book so massive props to the author for doing that overall very solid read the next book I finished was Invisible Women by Caroline Criado Perez. I did start this in February, but I did just finish it in March. I won't say too much about this. As always, I don't rate nonfiction, so I don't have a rating for this. This was a very interesting book about the gender gap and gender bias there is in data. So basically when data is recorded, it is almost always recorded for men and very rarely recorded for women. Or even if it is recorded for both, it's not separated and analyzed separately. And so women are almost always overlooked. And this goes from crash test dummies being modeled on men to the medical industry not trialing drugs on women so them often not working or even ones that would work being missed to literally anything else you can think of this was so interesting i did end up listening to it on audiobook which i would recommend because the author narrates it herself and is phenomenal and you can really feel the passion and i think especially with this being really data driven and really dense i think listening to it made it a lot easier to digest at least for me I think it would have been quite a dry read actually reading it but I do highly recommend this it was very very good it is a difficult read because it really highlights the problems we have in our society but it was very good so I would recommend giving it a go if it's a topic that interests you there are also podcasts and articles if you want to learn more about the subject without necessarily reading the book so I'll try and remember to link a couple of those down below for you next continuing with the novellas I read The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Guy Vo. This one was a little bit disappointing for me. I think I gave it a 3.5 in the end, but I said in that video, and I will say again, I do have full intentions of rereading this in the future, probably not too far in the future, because I was very tired when I read this and I feel like I didn't fully digest it. Like even now I would struggle to give you a synopsis. So I do think that impacted my rating. I think there's a very good chance it would go up to a minimum of a four, if not higher, if I read it again. But this follows a chronicler who is going to find this handmaiden called Rabbit who worked for like a young royal. And I think there's female, female themes. It was quite a slow story, just in the fact that it's just told quite matter of fact. It wasn't like high pace action kind of thing. I feel like I don't have much to say because the story just didn't go into my brain when I was exhausted, which is completely my own fault for reading it when I was so tired. But I would recommend it. I've heard phenomenal things. I know everyone else loves it. And I think I would love it a lot more than I did if I'd read it in a better situation. So I do still recommend this one, even though it wasn't my favourite. And then another novella, we've still got a few more. I read Fireheart Tiger by Aliette de Bodard. This I gave four stars. I really liked this. This is inspired by pre-colonial Vietnam. And it's really interesting. This follows a young princess who is sent off to another country for basically political gain when she's really young ends up falling in love with their princess and then a few years later that princess comes to visit a romance starts there's betrayal there's tension it's really good really interesting family dynamics female female relationship i genuinely really enjoyed this one i thought it was really really strong and i would highly recommend you checking it out okay we're down to the last two novellas now next up we have the black god's drums by p Lee clark I gave this one a two star. Unfortunately, I will admit, and I did say in that video, some of my issues with this book are completely on me. The language used in this book, both for the dialogue and for the narration style, was reminiscent of Creole, I think it is, and some French as well, but not 
French that we'd be familiar with today and I personally found that incredibly difficult to read. I really struggled to engage with it and that is on me. I've only ever spoken English, I have no familiarity with other languages. So I did find it really difficult. It wasn't like a translation issue, it was just like phonetically written out. So I found it really taxing to read. I also, I don't think because of the language, this is a natural criticism, I could not follow this book. I do not know what happened. I followed it to about halfway, do not know what happened in the second half. As a quick overview, this follows like a dystopian feeling New Orleans, but it's set in the past. It's quite steampunky kind of vibes as like, you know, big air balloons and what are they call blimps, all of that, airships. And it follows a girl who is really determined to get onto one of these airships and she's like doing sneaky things to get there. She also has access to some kind of magic. I don't know, it wasn't for me, it didn't do much for me, it was quite a disappointing read and I ended up giving it two stars. And then the final one I read was Silver in the Wood by Emily Tesh. I loved this one, this was a four star read for me. I'm so hyped to read the sequel at some point. This is a kind of almost slightly gothic feeling fantasy story. It's like southern gothic, that kind of vibe. And it follows a man who lives in the woods and basically tends to these woods, cares for them, they are very much his. And someone else comes and buys the estate and so technically owns it. These two men, you know, get to know each other, fall for each other, it's adorable. There is so much interesting backstory slowly revealed throughout this book. Generally so good, beautiful writing, really interesting story, would highly recommend this one. The next book I read or listened to was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid, I'll put the cover up here. I have read this before when it first came out, I actually read it as an arc, and ever since I've wanted to listen to the audiobook and I just didn't. I do not listen to audiobooks very often as many of you know, and so I just never got around to it. And then having listened to Invisible Women, I was kind of like, maybe I'll try another one. And I already had the audiobook, So I listened to it. I listened to the whole thing in about four days, which for me is really fast for an audiobook. And I really, really enjoyed it. I still gave it a four star. It didn't quite creep up for me. It did make me cry, which definitely didn't happen when I read it physically. So I really, really enjoyed it, truly. I thought it was really good. Um, as everyone else has said, I do recommend the audiobook over reading it physically. The reading it physically is still good. It was just a really interesting read. And the audiobook is done absolutely phenomenally with the full cast. It is just really, really solid. And for very quick plots overview, because I've not given that, this follows a band that formed in like the 60s and 70s, and then also how they came to split up. And it's like years later, it's the first time they're talking about any of this. And my favorite part about it is how you're seeing every character's perspective. And so they all disagree with each other basically on why they split up, why things happened the way they did, all of that, because they're all just recounting from their own memories and it never is gonna be a cut and dry reason. Just fascinating, so good, heart wrenching, really, really enjoyed it. The next book I read was another e arc. It was a graphic novel called Cheer Up, Love and Pom Poms. This was adorable. This is a super cute queer graphic novel following a cheerleading squad and it follows a trans girl main character and a lesbian main character and oh, it has so many good conversations about allyship and how being an ally is great but you have to listen to the person you're trying to support instead of speaking over them which is a thing a lot of people tend to do really cute art style really cute story highly recommend i'm not exactly sure when this one comes out it's definitely later this year i'll put the date up on the screen here with the cover but it was really, really good, really, really cute. The perfect kind of YA graphic novel quick read. Really glad I read it, but I don't wanna to say too much more because it's pretty short, so I don't wanna spoil anything for you. And then next up for Bacoplathon, along with the previous book, I read From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is a fantasy romance story following a character called Poppy, who is the maiden. She's not allowed to speak to anyone. She can't interact with anyone. She's not allowed to be looked upon, all of this and she is like, being preserved for this ascension and she's gonna take you with her and like elevate them as well. There's a lot of lore in this, there's vampires, there's all sorts. Really interesting, can't explain it all in one very quick clip. But I really enjoyed this, I gave this a four star. I love the writing, there was so much tension between the characters that was just palpable and really great. Not enough smut for my liking, I was hoping there'd be more smut, but I have been told there's a lot more in the second book which I intend to read whenever I can fit it in. So definitely enjoyed this, definitely a really strong start to a very long series, which I'm so excited to continue with. And I was genuinely surprised by how much I liked the writing. I've not heard anyone comment on the writing, but at least at the beginning, I thought it was really, really strong. So just putting that out there, because I don't feel like enough people have been mentioning that. Carrying on with the Hoplathon, I then read Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. This is a adult contemporary. I'm not going to call it a romance, which is what it is marketed as because I actually questioned that. It did have romance for the first half of the book and a little bit in the second half, 
but it was so not the vibe of the book overall. Like when I hear romance, I expect flirty and banter and maybe some smarts and just that kind of vibe. And this was way more hard hitting, which is fine, but I don't feel like it should have been marketed as a romance. It could be a contemporary with romance, but not a romance book. It at least doesn't fit what I would expect from that genre. But anyway, this follows Grace who just finished their PhD and goes out to Vegas, gets drunk and marries another woman who she then has to find. That was adorable, super cute. It then went a lot into a very important issue of women and especially black women and how they're treated in academia and in life, in like values and things like this. Really interesting, great discussions, loved seeing Grace's storyline, but I did end up giving this a 3.5 star because I was slightly disappointed because it wasn't what I was hoping for. I wanted a fun, rompy romance. This was a tad too serious for the vibe I was looking for and I also got a little bit bored by it, which sounds bad, getting bored by someone's plight, but however much I really cared what was being spoken about and how important it was and I seriously valued that because I mean as a white woman in academia studying engineering and stuff it's been bad enough, I just I can't even imagine how much worse it must be as a woman of colour, so all of that was phenomenal and I did enjoy it but it just didn't grip me in the way I wished it would have and it didn't impact me as much as I would have hoped. So 3.5 star. Next up, I read a graphic novel, which was Skyward Volume 1. I absolutely loved this. This is the beginning of a quite short graphic novel series, which is about the concept of if Earth completely lost gravity, how would the world look 25 years later? So good, absolutely loved this. The art style is gorgeous. The story was fascinating. I loved the way this world had adapted to make do with no gravity. I thought it was done extraordinarily well. I'm really excited to continue on with this series. Again, I'm not going to say too much more. The plot was really interesting, but I'm not going to comment on it because it's only short and I want you guys to experience it for yourself. So four star, really strong, really enjoyed this one. Next up, we do have another slightly disappointing read and that is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I picked this up for the prompt of Other because it is very different from the type of book I normally read. But I've seen so many people love it, I thought I would too. I really didn't. I ended up giving this a 2.5 star. I was bored. I understood the idea and what Matt Haig was trying to do and I can see why that's really valuable and I can see why it meant so much to so many people. But although I loved the premise and loved the idea and loved what he was trying to do, I don't feel like it was achieved well. I feel like the writing was bland, the character was bland, the story was just a bit boring and it didn't do much for me. But as a premise, this does follow, I can't even remember the main character's name. This follows Nora, who basically attempts suicide because she's so miserable with her life and she's just done. And she is given the opportunity to go to the Midnight Library where she can go back and experience every other possible life she could have lived if she'd made a different decision and basically look through all of her regrets. So she regretted not marrying someone. She regretted not taking on a career path. She can experience what every single one of those would have been like and kind of see if she actually made the right choice in giving up on life or whether her life wasn't so bad, that kind of thing. Lovely concept, really fascinating idea. It just did nothing for me. I was bored throughout. I really had to push myself to finish this one. It didn't impact me in any way, which was really disappointing given the subject matter. I just, I, yeah, it was a big letdown for me, this one. And then onto the final book I finished. I did actually start about three others, but I didn't finish them, so they won't be in this video. The last one is Saga Volume 6. No, it's not, it's Saga Volume 5. I am obviously quite a way into this graphic novel series now. It's a brilliant um, sci-fi adult graphic novel series. It is graphic from violence to sex to cute as hell characters as well. It's everything. And this is a really interesting, almost like Romeo and Juliet, you know, star-crossed lovers kind of story. It's this man and woman who are from different races who get married and have a child, but both of their races are at war with each other. And so they then hate them and the child that has been created. And the amount that has happened in the first five volumes of this is just incredible. It is so good. I'm obviously not going to tell you what happened in this volume because it's the fifth one, but this is five out of nine. I'm really intrigued, but nervous to continue because I know everyone is like broken by the end of volume nine, but I'm loving it. It's a really solid series. I'm excited to continue. Gave this four stars as I have for every volume in this series. It's just generally really great. I realized I just said Saga was the last book I read. No, it wasn't. I then also read Between Perfect and Real by Ray Steve, which I read on an e-galley. So again, ebook cover, phenomenal. Brilliant YA contemporary. This follows a character called Dean, who is a trans boy. And he is coming to terms with being trans throughout this book and really comes to terms with when he is cast as Romeo in his school play. 
and he doesn't know whether to come out to tell people he's trans or whether to kind of keep playing along. He's especially struggling because to everyone that knows him, he is a lesbian and the one other person who thinks this is his girlfriend. So there's a lot going on. The characters in this were phenomenal. The storyline was engaging. I literally sat down at like 9pm one evening and finished it by one. It was so engaging and just phenomenal. Highly recommend. It comes out this month in April, so please check it out. It was just so good, so interesting. I had the best time reading it. If you want like a quick, fun, but impactful way, contemporary, this is the book you're looking for. So this is the stack. I realize I'm not holding that spines out, which is very unhelpful, but it's absolutely huge. I had obviously the most incredible and unexpected reading month. Let's try this again, spines out. There we go. That's all the books I read this month, minus the three eBooks I read and like the audiobook or whatever. I've read quite a few non-physical books this month. It was phenomenal. I can't believe I read this much. It'll never happen again, I'm sure. This was very much a one-off spurred on by lots of very short books. But that is it for the video. That is all I read. So thank you for watching. Let me know down in the comments how your reading went in March. Did you have a good reading month? Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me. Links to all of my social media as well as read-alongs and book clubs that I host are down below in the description along with my Patreon and wishlist if you want to check out any of that. So bye and I'll see you in the next one.